in my view, one should select a president on the basis of his or her ideas, what he or she stands for, whether he or she can lead, and at certain times, whether he or she can inspire a nation. But there are others who think that the question of who to pick depends upon the electability of that candidate, the winnability of that candidate, especially in a primary. I would hope that issue would be irrelevant. But what's been surprising to me is the extraordinary number of friends who report that in this primary season, they're voting for Senator Clinton because in her view, only she can win. Now that's puzzling to me because I don't see how she could win. And while that might be hard to see in the context of the full array of Republican candidates Hillary Clinton might have run against, I think it's extremely easy to see when we focus on the one Republican candidate she would be running against. In my view, it is absolutely clear that Hillary Clinton is the dream candidate for John McCain to run against, at least in his view of the election. And it's in my view true that if Hillary Clinton is our nominee, then John McCain will be our president. Making her our nominee would be an extraordinary blunder for the Democratic Party, another blunder yet again. To see this, we might focus first on the polls, because, of course, the polls already are showing that it's Obama who beats McCain and McCain who beats Clinton. And not just one poll, but the average of a series of polls have consistently shown that it's Obama who can win and Clinton who would lose. But I think we're too easily misled by polls. The question should not be what the numbers show today. The question should be how the issue, the campaign, would be framed. How would it be seen by ordinary people as the campaign develops? And to see this, we have to think about the strengths and weaknesses of Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama as they stand up against John McCain. So think first about the strengths. Hillary Clinton has run a campaign against Barack Obama based upon her experience and her toughness. But when you substitute John McCain for Barack Obama on each of these issues, John McCain dominates. John McCain dominates in experience. He's been in the Senate for 25 years to her eight years in the Senate. And John, prisoner of war, McCain certainly dominates on toughness. So if the election is about these issues, the issues she's defined in her campaign against Barack Obama, we lose that election. But focus more on the weaknesses. I've identified moral courage, the power of money interests, and war as particular weaknesses that I think mar her candidacy. But there's another as well, and that's a generational weakness that I'm going to talk about in a second. So first think about moral courage. If you think about the allied campaign of uh, Bill and Hillary Clinton, these two people, whether fairly or not, are not known for their straight talk or moral courage, the willingness to stand up for what's right in the face of what's politically expedient. And whether fairly or not, John McCain is. His straight talk express took off because of an at least clear perception in the electorate that this was his character to speak straight about difficult issues, whether you like that position or not. That's a reason why he would be preferred over Hillary Clinton. Second, about moneyed interest. John McCain has been a leader in campaign finance reform against the position of many in his own party. Hillary, lobbyists represent real people Clinton, has not been known as a leader in campaign finance reform or ethics reform either. And third, about the war. Both John McCain and Hillary Clinton supported the war. That means this election would not be focused on that decision in the past. It would be focused on a debate about what we would do in the future. But Iraq's future is increasingly uncertain, and there's no clear advantage of one strategy over another. And instead, in many people's mind, there would be a clear advantage in having someone as experienced as John McCain overseeing that future war. Finally, there's an issue about generations. We've already seen how John McCain would frame this campaign. We've already seen how he sees the clear difference between him and Hillary Clinton. Here's an ad he ran in the A few days ago, Senator Clinton tried to spend $1 million on the Woodstock 
concert museum. <laughs> now, my friends, I wasn't there. I'm sure it was a cultural and pharmaceutical event. <laughs> I, was, I was tied up at the time. No one can be president of the United States that supports projects such as these. The point is, this campaign would be a return to a debate about Woodstock. It would be a return to a debate about the Vietnam War, a return to a debate about the struggles of the 1960s, about Reaganism versus anti-Reaganism, a debate that would inspire exhaustion in anybody under the age of 40 and radically dampen the passion that this campaign has ignited for them to get out to vote. So how would Barack be any different? Well, think about his strengths and his weaknesses. First, his strengths. And the number one strength Barack has is this war. Barack opposed the war from the very beginning. And as this campaign would be framed, it would be framed as a referendum on that fundamental mistake in judgment. And America is with us in that referendum already. There is a clear contrast between the erroneous judgment of John McCain and the right judgment of Barack Obama. And that erroneous judgment of John McCain continues as he continues to talk about what he describes as possibly a hundred-year war in continuing the mistake of the Bush administration. And second, with respect to change, Barack Obama has pushed a strong reform agenda to remove money from the center of how Washington works. Now, John McCain has pushed an agenda like that, too, but Barack's position here would clearly be seen as better. He has not taken money from lobbyists in this campaign. He doesn't have the scandal of the Keating Five in his past. If reform is at the center of this debate, Barack Obama wins that debate. Think about his weaknesses, though. The number one weakness here is said to be age. Barack Obama is young. He lacks some of the wisdom, perhaps, and the experience, people say, that someone as old as John McCain carries. But I think this weakness is actually an advantage because it focuses the debate, frames the debate, about the future, not the past. It makes this a campaign about change, not rehashing the errors of the last 30 years. It's about who can establish leadership, who can inspire a vision for this future, who has a set of ideals that America can, can rally about around? The presidency is filled with experts galore. But the question is not the experts. The question is who can summon a people to a vision of something better, to a joyous vision of something better, a reason to come out and vote for something more. Now, between Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama, clearly it's Obama who can do that. And this was the point that Carolyn Kennedy made in her extraordinarily moving op-ed endorsing Barack Obama for president. For she saw in Barack Obama a reflection of the inspiration all of us felt from her own father. On the year Barack Obama was born, John Kennedy stood before the world and reminded us of this. Let the word go forth from this time and place to friend and foe alike that the torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans. The ideals of that generation need to be taken by this generation. This generation needs to take the torch to change what we have been and make us something better. Real change not debates about tinkering with the past 20 years. Real change that would fix America, not just for today, but for tomorrow. So when you focus on this question of winnability and think this election must be decided on the basis of who can win, then in my view, that decision means Barack Obama. And if you focused this election on the ideals that each candidate stands for. In my view, that's a decision that also favors Barack Obama. Either way, in my view, this election for the Democrats must be for Barack Obama if this election is to bring about the change that America so desperately wants.